I just got vaccinated. I guess I should take this off. <gasps> hey crew, welcome back to Spiritual Social. I'm Lexi, your local light worker. I'm a tarot reader and an astrologer. A common request that I usually get, which is, Lexi, why am I not feeling like my sun sign? If I'm supposed to be a sun sign in Scorpio, why do I feel like a Leo? If I'm supposed to be a sun in Gemini, why do I identify more with Aries energy? There are a couple of explanations why you might not identify with your astrological sun sign. The sun! It shows what our life revolves around. It shows our identity, our goals. It shows what we naturally attract towards us, what we have to put very little effort into being. And it's this bright radiant star in the center of our solar system that gives warmth and around which all of the other planets gravitate around. Traditionally ruled by the sign of Leo, governing over the month of August, the sun shows in our chart what we are naturally good at. It is strongly connected to who we think we are based on the psychological experiences that we had while we were growing up. In the construction of your sun, its armor and the way it has constructed the wall between itself and the world, a lot of things fit in like religious beliefs, cultural norms, gender norms, social norms in your community, a lot of your own mental hangups due to the astrological placements that you have in your birth charts. In this video, I'm going to try to explain to you as briefly as I can the seven markers of why your sun sign is not shining as it should and why you might not be feeling like your sun sign. So stay tuned. For one, your sun is blocked. Saturn has something to do with it. Saturn is the planet of limitations, karma, obstacles, delays, things that take a very, very long time until they reach full maturation and fruition. If you have a sun conjunct Saturn, if you have a sun in Capricorn, or if you have a sun square Saturn opposing Saturn, then you are going to struggle to accept your sun sign. You might identify more with your ascendant, with your moon sign, Sign, you're going to feel uncomfortable with your sun sign. Usually over the age of 35, this tension tends to find some sort of resolution and you start to shine more, to feel more adequate in your particular sun sign. There is another component that might interfere and block your light, which is if you have your sun conjunct north node or what in Vedic astrology is called Rahu. This basically means that your sun is not well developed in this lifetime. You don't know how to shine. You don't know how to have an identity. You come from a past lifetime where you had to subject your ego to someone else's ideal of leadership or dominant personality. You might have been a victim, you might have been a person that was incarcerated, a person that was heavily abused, a person that might have suffered from mental health issues, a person that was somehow stifled in their growth and development. You don't know how to exert a healthy ego into the world because there is such a thing as a healthy ego which we all need to have normally in order to function in this world and there are more toxic egos or overinflated egos, egos that were created on a basis of anxiety and self-loathing. Coming back to the North Node, the North Node means that you need to grow into something in this lifetime. It is your destiny, what you are meant to do in this lifetime, whether you like it or not, you incarnate it here. But basically, you're supposed to grow into the energy of your identity. If you have Sun conjunct Rahu, you would be obsessed with other people's capacity to be themselves. And you might find that you don't know who you are. But don't worry, Buttercup, because slowly, and especially after the age of 33, when traditionally the South Node gets completely karmically evacuated and the North Node takes charge, you will be pushed on your destined path and you will find out how to be a sun, how to radiate, how to shine your light. Number two, as a woman, traditionally, it is considered by other astrologers that are wiser and older than me, people that I have also learned from, that as a woman, you tend to identify more with your moon sign than your sun sign. So let's say you are a sun in Virgo and a moon in Scorpio. 
guess which one of the two you might feel closer to a moon and scorpio so you might behave like a scorpio you might feel more attracted to scorpios you might emotionally understand them the moon rules our unconscious minds it is about secrets it is about blending in with our environment it is a lot about projections so as you know guys it is much easier to imagine we are in a certain way or to um, project ourselves onto other people rather than to own our light this is something that a lot of people find difficult to do but also it is encouraged in our culture for us to have low self-esteem in order for us to keep buying products keep buying services that reaffirm our self-esteem so it's both a collective issue and an individual issue and some individuals charts depending on a variety of circumstances your childhood other factors in your birth charts it could also be the cultural inheritance that you were born with the certain curses that are running down your family bloodline a variety of things contribute to the makeup of why you might struggle to embody your son but in this case i have seen with the majority of women clients that came to me to ask me for why do they feel less like their sun sign and more like something else in their chart usually that something else was their moon sign because of gender socialization and because we are being told from a very young age that women are supposed to be the nurturing patient passive ones and men are supposed to be the ones with the ego with the confidence with the identity that kind of uh, overpowers other identities women tend to naturally unconsciously fall in that identification with their moon sign rather than their sun sign while men well you've guessed it tend to fall more into the sun sign one but even there there's a catch number three as a man you paradoxically might feel less like your sun sign and more like your mars sign again a lot of gender socialization a lot of traditions and cultural habits and cultural norms feed into why you might unconsciously feel more like your mars sign than your sun sign you might be a sun in Taurus male, but you might have a Mars in Aries. So you feel more like an Aries individual. You might be a bit of a badass or a bad boy. You might be attracted to risk. You might love adrenaline. And this kind of goes a little bit in the opposite direction of your Venus prone, your security, comfort loving sun sign. In time, you might resolve this contradiction. In astrology, we call two neighboring planets or a conflict between these two neighboring planets a quincunx. I'm not going to get into the details of what that means for the larger collective now, but just keep in mind that that tension feels a little bit awkward and alien, and it's usually experienced between two signs that are neighboring, such as Pisces and Aquarius, Gemini and Cancer. This can play out in your chart, especially in the chart of a man, for example. If you have a Sun in Cancer and a Mars in Gemini, you're gonna be pulled into two really strange and uncomfortable directions. Why? Well, because one represents the sphere of emotions, Cancer, and you might identify more with your Mars in Gemini, which is a lot about brainy, superficial, breath of knowledge that you can acquire very fast and communicate to other people as equally fast there might be a conflict between your mind and your emotions and you will forever be drawn between this inner conflict until you find a way to blend those contradictions within yourself another reason why you might feel that your light is stifled that you don't really identify with your sun sign is because you have a halluva of planets interfering with it this we call in astrology a stellium stellium from stella the latin word for star it means that you have a cluster of stars that are kind of choking your sun i've seen this play out so many times in the charts of the majority of the people that reached out to me stellium is wonderfully powerful because it gives you like a concentrated area in your chart usually that cluster of planets falls in one sign in one area of your chart and it's a little bit of an imbalanced chart because you go through long periods of time with not much is happening in your life and then all of a sudden when Saturn hits that stellium everything goes down because it will touch upon your Sun your Venus your Mercury maybe some Jupiter thrown in the mix as well well it's gonna be a halluva of energy that you need to take in all at once people that are born in this world with stelliums are intense they are meant to create Create intense legacies they are meant to uplift us all from the collective they live with imbalance from day one and they are brought into this incarnation in order to find a way to innovate to break the patterns of old outdated ways of thinking
So if you have your sun conjunct a variety of different planets, normally we would call the stellium what is up from three planets onwards. So you need to have Sun, Mercury and Venus and potentially throw in Saturn or Jupiter there, maybe Mars. We do not take into account the North and the South node of the Moon or any other asteroids like the famous Lilith, the wild feminine archetype or Chiron, the wounded healer. These are the ones that I like to work with and interpret in my birth chart readings. Another reason why you might not feel like your son is the fact that your son is placed in house of Libra, the seventh house. This is the house of partnerships. This is the house where you work for others, where you see yourself existing through other people's understandings of who you really are. It is a deeply unconscious part of our chart. It deals with aspects such as the shadow self, things that we are not aware that we are things that we might not like to think that we are, but unconsciously we play them out, we bring them out, we project them onto other people. The seventh house is also the space where the descendant line is crossing. It's usually delineating what lies on the other side, our rising sign, the ascendant. So it's the place where the sun sets while the rising sign is the place where the sun rises. So solar consciousness on one side, descending unconscious matter, on the other side. So the seventh house is that space where you're not really aware of your identity. You're not really aware of what you're good at or what you are shining at unless you have a partner. People that have a son in the seventh house, something really interesting that I've noticed is that they tend to figure out who they are only in interaction with other people. It's almost like when they are by themselves in a still and quiet place, they're not really able to pinpoint, but what makes me who I am. They can feel who they are, they can think about who they are and act on their beliefs, their values and their identity only in collaboration with other people. They have a highly relational way of seeing the world and of existing in the world. That's because they shine in the house of other people's business. Another reason why you might not be feeling like your son is because you were born on a cusp. You were born in between two different signs, right at the partitioning point. Okay, I have an issue with a cusp and I actually prepared an article. Feel free to check it at my website. I have a particular issue with the, with the idea of a cusp. Uh, that's mostly because I like to work with precise degrees, especially when I construct astrological birth charts and transit reports. And when you look at a specific birth chart, you can tell whether a person is either zero degrees of a specific sun sign or 29 degrees of a specific sun sign. There is no confusion. Astrology can actually be ridiculously precise. If you're born on a cusp, sometimes people might get a little bit confused because energy is kind of hard to box in and we do have a number of other things that interfere with the way we measure time and the way that we uh, partition the signs each year such as the fact that the constellations can move the fact that the magnetic point of the earth is also shifting at considerable points in time the fact that we have a leap year in one year and then we don't have a leap year in other years so this can move a little bit by a day or two the energy of a specific constellation and a sign. This is why some people that are born on the 20th of March in one specific year are at 29 degrees of Pisces, while others can be at zero degrees of Aries. If you are born on a cusp, you could identify more with the characteristics of one of the two signs that you might be feeling the energies of. Take me for example, I'm born on the 20th of March, three hours away from midnight. I'm technically not even a sun in something, I'm more like the void in something the last sign in the last degree at nightfall. Anyway, coming back to the light, sometimes I feel like a Pisces and other times I feel like an Aries. This is because the energy was very packed. It's almost as if the 29th degrees of a specific sign can already feel the energy of another sign. So you might be conflicted. Sometimes you might act, for example, if you're born on the cusp of magic. Sometimes you might act like a Gemini. Other times you might act like a Cancer. It all depends on the varying energy that you were born with. Consider yourself as being born with flexible, adaptable energy and try not to box yourself in. This is the best way to work with cusp energy. You might not identify with the traditional characteristics of your zodiac sign because you are two signs in one. You get the best of both worlds, Munchkin.
Another reason why you are not feeling like your sun sign is because your sun is conjunct an outer planetary influence. Outer planetary influences can sometimes overwhelm and override your sun sign. Let's say if you have a sun conjunct Pluto, you might be a gorgeous sun in Taurus, but you're gonna behave like a Scorpio. Why? Well, because Pluto wins in the game of who's gonna overpower whom when it touches the sun. Your sun has a darkness to it, a dark quality, and you're gonna find yourself reacting in the way in which you achieve your goals and the way you think about your identity like a super powerful and stoic Plutonian. When your sun is conjunct Uranus, you could be a very traditional Virgo. You might like to just focus on your work and not step out of line and be very rule abiding and mind your own business. But if your sun is conjunct Uranus, then you bet your ass you're gonna be a little bit of a rebel, a little bit of an innovator. You're gonna create a lot of chaos in your life just for the thrill of it because your mind needs to experience a lot of different converging sometimes conflicting bits of information in order to rise into its Uranus power of high-minded processing and bringing from the ether a humanitarian ideal for all of us to experience on a collective level. You will be attracted to weird and unique individuals and there's not much you can do about it because you incarnated in this lifetime with the Sun conjunct Uranus in the sign of Virgo in order to resolve that contradiction. How can I be both traditional and mind my own business and also rebellious and an innovating badass? If your sun is conjunct Saturn, for example, you could be a very loving, very sweet, but a little bit wishy-washy Pisces sun. If your sun is conjunct Saturn, well, you bet your ass you're not going to be those qualities. You're going to be hardworking. You're gonna put a lot of effort into your career. Work might actually be center stage in your life. You're gonna pursue your goals with effort and determination with a similar intent and drive and skill as a Capricorn who is naturally ruled by Saturn. And this this is the influence of that Saturn Sun. You might not feel like your Sun until the age of 35, which is usually the karmic cutoff point. So that might be the reason why you might not be feeling like yourself if you have your Sun conjunct Saturn. If you have your Sun conjunct Jupiter, this is a much more luminous, optimistic influence, although some astrologers think that Jupiter has more of a negative connotation in the sense that it tends to exaggerate and give you an overconfidence in whatever area it touches. I can say that Sun conjunct Jupiter is truly a blessing. It protects you. It gets you out of trouble really quickly. I am born with a Sun conjunct Jupiter, but they're both in different signs. And I have to say that I've been really blessed with a lot of spiritual protection throughout moments in my life when I had to endure some pretty difficult situations. So Sun conjunct Jupiter, to my mind, is quite positive, different than other astrologers that might give it a more negative connotation. Here on this channel, I prefer to think of Jupiter as the great benefic. With the Sun conjunct Jupiter, you are going to feel like a Sagittarius. You are going to be protected by the divine. You will have a lot of faith. There will be nothing that will quench you or push you down. You could be a sun in Pauti Libra, but if you have your sun conjunct Jupiter, you are going to be incredibly lucky. Not only will you be naturally attractive, like we all know Libras are, hey there, <laughs> but you will also be incredibly lucky, optimistic. You will definitely be an educator or be attracted to education. So a sun conjunct Jupiter colors your personality in a different way. If you have a sun in a specific sign that is different than the planet that it rules, you might behave in a very different way. Now, the opposite is also true. If you are a sun in Aquarius and you have your sun conjunct Uranus, you're a double Aquarius. If you are a sun in Capricorn and your sun is conjunct Saturn, you're a double Capricorn. If you are a sun in Scorpio and your sun is conjunct Pluto, you're a double Plutonian or a double Scorpio. If you are a sun in Sagittarius and your sun is conjunct Jupiter, well, you guessed it, my love, you're a double Sagittarian. <laughs> So I hope this brings the issue home. I would like you right now to take whatever you've heard in this video and apply it to your specific chart. I don't want to read comments from you about, oh Lexi, I am these specific placements. How do these work? Is this good or bad? Don't think in good and bad. This is very pre-2020 kind of thinking, okay guys? We're being uplifted to a higher state of consciousness now. We need to think in complexities. 
think about, as I mentioned before with the example of the Sun and Virgo, clashing of traditionalism with the rebellious nature of Uranus. How would you work at combining those two energies in the decisions that you make in your life? How would you combine the gloominess of a sun in Capricorn with the open-mindedness of the sun in Capricorn conjunct Jupiter? Think about those really intricate moments and I wish you so much luck, so much light and especially have a great fun time interpreting astrological birth charts. And if you're still in doubt and would like to actually get a reading with me, I am open for readings. You can find details as to how you can book an astrological birth chart reading or an astro transits report. I also offer an astro bundle, which you can get two things for the price of one on my eShop at the link down below, the first link in the description box or in the comment section. I hope this helped. Ciao!